O tira koutou katoa ngā kai komihana i nono ho mai ki te taumata i mihi ana ki a koutou. A i runga e noe te mohio ko tēnei te wāhanga tuatahi o te rā ka mutu ko te kai kōrero tuatahi. A e tika ana ki a mihi a koutou. E tika ana ki a mihi a tātou katoa kua tatu mai nei. Kua whakarau i ka mai i tēnei rā. I runga e noe te mohio e whakapono ana tēnei hunga ki tēnei noho a ngā o tātou me ngā whae ngā kai mua tonu i te aroaro. Ano reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Tēnā koe. It is my privilege today to introduce Donald Koo. Uh, so uh, the commissioners are aware as to how we will present Donald's evidence today. Mm -hmm. Donald would like to introduce himself after the affirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a correction he wants to make with his name, which we thought it would be appropriate that he addresses right at the beginning before we get into his evidence. Kia ora, Donald. Okay. So, like, have you got your mic on? Yep. Yep. Cut by. So like uh, we spoke about, you'll take the affirmation with the commissioners and then I'll give it over to you to introduce yourself. Yeah. Kapai? How would you like me to call you, um, Donald? Are you Donald or Don or what's Donald. your name? Donald. Donald. Yeah. Oh, kia ora. Kia ora. Nga mihi atu ki a koe. Um, I'll take, give you the affirmation so that you can, we can get started. Just to ask you, okay? What information? Not informa affirmation. It's just asking you to tell the truth, okay? Uh, All right? Happy with that? Yeah. Okay. Do you solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that the evidence you'll give before this commission will be the truth, the I'm whole sure. truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I'll leave you now with, with Alana. Okay? Kia ora, Donald. Would you like to introduce yourself now? My name is Donald Daniel Q. Um, my dad told me my name is Q, it's K-U, not K-I-U. Mm. Well then we will change all our documents to make sure that we get that right. Yeah. Thank you. Kia ora Donald, so I just wanted to start by saying thank you so much for coming here today. I know, I know it was a long journey up from Wanganui, yeah. and also to say thank you to Marlene and Raina for coming with you as well, Ne. Yeah. Uh, so we're just going to have a kōrero, Ne, just like we did we have before, yep. and we'll just talk about some of those issues that we did. Now, before I start, I know that you like to use some kupu when we're having a kōrero, a uh, Māori kupu. Okay. And so I thought we would have a look at those words so you can tell the commissioners what your understanding of those are first. Oh, yeah. So the first one I think that you hold dear to you as pepe, eh? What does that mean? Um, to me it means it, it's, a, it's a body and, and, a, and it's a form of, of a pepe. But a pepe is not a baby, but a body. Mm. Kia ora. And I think that's important for the, the kōrero we're about to have, eh? Yeah. Another one of those kupu, those words were... Io? Io, pepe and toa. What does Eeyore mean to you, Donald? Um, our God. Our God. Mm. Yeah, and you know, he means a lot to me. He found my, found my way and started learning how to talk to people properly. And mm. he, when you say our God, do you mean Māori? All of ours. All of ours. Mm. Kia ora. From mm. this land. Mm. Mm. And the other kupu or word was toa. Toa. Which is what we become up to Pepe, we become Tor. Mm. And so we are Tor to the land. 
kia ora, and I think that's very important for our kōrero to have those words pepe, io and toa, yeah. because you really believe in, in those understandings. Eh? Yes. Kia ora, Donald, thank you for that. Okay, so we're going to get into, into the kōrero that we've had before. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and you just answer it in the best way that you can. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, if you need to take a break, or anything like that, you do that, and we can come back and continue on with your kōrero. Yep. Kāpai. Kāpai. Now, I might be speaking a little bit slowly. <laughs> now, that's just because we have people typing out what we say, and we also have sign language people over there. So that's yep. why I might be speaking a bit slower. So, Donald, where were you born? In Rati. Rati. That's where I was born. Um, yeah. And you say you are Ngāti Maniapoto and Tūwhare Toa, yep. is that right? Yeah. From your mother's side and your father's side? My father's side. My father's Maniapoto and my mum's Tūwhare Toa. Kia ora, kia ora. And so, when you were in Raitihi, Raitihi, yep. Raitihi you were living with your mother yep. and your whānau? Um, yeah, my whānau, yep. I wasn't, uh, wasn't much going on there either. How many siblings do you have, Donald? I have um, one sister and seven brothers. Yeah, and they're all in the same situation as I'm in. Mm. Their kids are going through the jail system and all of that, and they're my, they're my children. And you told me that in your first few years, you actually spent some time living with your grandmother, is that yeah, right? Yeah, one, one of the pepe I was. When you were a pepe? Yeah. What was that like, living with your grandmother, Donald? It was awesome. It was awesome. She taught me a lot. Taught me how to cook and wash clothes and hang the clothes up and all that. Took the garden. Yeah. But you didn't keep living with your grandmother. What happened? Um, Sips got involved. Or social welfare, they got involved and they, they, my, my nanny was asking for me but Sips wouldn't let me go. So she wanted you to stay with her and you wanted to stay yeah. with her. How old was your mum when you were born? First went to Lake Alice. Do you remember what the buildings, what the whare were like? I sure did, yep. Yeah. They, um, they had villages, a villa. And it was about thirty odd men in, in the in the in the villa. And uh, the the pillows were us seven. And I was in here with uh, with some adults, some grown ups and old people. And that's where I met Howard Lawrence. And Howard Lawrence was a nurse for uh Blake Ellis and well one day he asked me to go for a walk in the in the forest forest area and he took some people. And um, I had to stay by Howard Lawrence, and he pissed all over me. This was one of the nurses at <coughs> Lake Alice. Lake Alice pissed all over me. He kicked me and stomped on me, and he told me to go back to the villa, and he came up the stairs, and Nana and Tani was at the back, where well, he came up the stairs and threw me up against the wall like that, and he was, and he was undoing his, pimp, his belt, but... Uh, I don't know what he was doing, but I think we're going to have sex. I think we did. We did have sex. I know this is really hard to talk about, Donald, so I'm going to take you slowly through it. Yeah. I just want to go back to when you said you guys were going for a walk in the woods. Yeah, in the forest. Is, yeah. that, is that what Nurse Howard would do? Yeah, take us for walks and... Yeah, he took us for walks and he took us down to where they make beer cakes. And I had to make beer cakes and, and he was holding an hour and I banged his finger. Man, he gave me a good hiding. Who was we? Was it you and the yeah, other Lawrence. tamariki that he took for a walk in the woods? Oh, tamarikis. There was only four, four tamarikis and all those were sort of adult, like 20 year olds or 25, you know, adults. And why did he 
What did he tell you for why you were going for a walk in the woods? Oh no, he just comes, you're coming for a walk and, and, and he wants to come for a walk and go. And then he urinated on you? Yep, he urinated on me. He kicked me to the ground first and so I attacked him, tried to bite us and tried to bite it. But he put the, put the boot in and put, kicked me to the ground. Yeah. Did he do anything else to you at that time, Donald? Well, that's when he took me back to the villa and threw me up the wall like that. And, um, and yeah, there was another time he did it. It was when I was in the bath. I was having a bath and all the kids were cleared from the bathroom area. And I was in the bath and, he, and I come up like that. And he come and held his grab by the throat like that and put, put me up up there and just threw me on the ground. Were other people... Do you, do you know why you think he treated you that way, Donald? I feel I had no ears. I had no ears to so I, I didn't listen to him. And, uh... I took your feet in the sack. Because the building was closing down at the time. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'm just going to read something that you told me and I write, wrote down in your statement. Is that okay? You said a number of nurses, and especially Nurse Howard, would walk past me and kick me and slap me just because they wanted to yeah. and just because they could. Nurse Howard would do this to all the Māori boys. Yeah. And I think it was because he was racist. I don't know, I don't know if he was racist, but he didn't do it to the park here, boys, mm. or the park here, um, adolescent children. When I left from Villa 7, I went to Villa 16. And Villa 16 was all ad adolescent people. And they threw me in there when I was 7 or 8, 68, they was in, I was in there. And, um, Can you read that bit again? Yes. Uh, he, he said, you said he would walk past me and kick me and slap me just because they wanted to. So this happened quite often. Yeah, Is that right, well, Donald? I was there. Yeah. yeah. And you would see that happening to other Māori boys. Yeah, okay. And there was no reason for it. Well, I believe there wasn't any reason for it. Yeah. You also say in your statement, he would grab the Māori boys by the neck and yeah. shake them. This happened until the other nurses, like Sandra Puke, yeah. would come and stop him. He wasn't a big man, but he was much bigger than us boys, and the authority he had made him think he was a big man. Yeah. Just continuing to talk about Nurse Howard, because yeah. that's uh, who it sounds like in your court at all. Uh, treated you badly, badly the most. Ne? Uh, it was him that you said gave you shock treatment, is that yeah. right? He, he put me on the bed and two nurses holding me down and he just put wires to my head. And I don't know what the shock treatment is, but it makes you go like that. Yeah. What led to him doing that? Do you remember, Donald? Was it that, that time in the woods or was it a different time? It was a different time. But I just had no ears. I just wouldn't listen to him. So it was for punishment? I think so, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that first time that you got shock treatment? Who was in the room? Uh, how they gave it to you? They put me on the bed. I can't remember the nurse, but how Lance was there, mm. and there was two nurses for maximum block, because that's where they gave me the injection, a maximum block. And they took, they dragged me out to maximum, and then Howard Lawrence came into the, to the bedroom where I was, and two other nurses that were holding me down, and all I was throwing was, I was just throwing tantrums. That's all I was throwing, but they, they whistled me to the ground and just put two wires on me. I don't know what they were, but they, they made me go like that. Mm. Yeah. So they took you from a room that you were in 
and you weren't doing anything, they just came and grabbed you, took you into another room, yeah. and put pads on your yeah. head, was it? A wire, I don't know. Wires? Yeah. I thought I was struggling and I was, I was really playing off. Did anybody have to hold you down, Donald? Yeah, two nurses. I don't know their name. But Mana and Mana and Tane, they came on the second one. Mana and Tane told him to stop that. He doesn't need that and that uh, what you're doing to him. And Mana and Tane took me back to the to the unit I was in. And, and, and um, Mana and Tane got transferred to another unit. Because Howard Lawrence was in the unit that I was in. And Howard Lawrence didn't want them there. So Mana and Tane were nurses as well? Yeah. How long did they, if you remember, Donald, if you don't, that's fine. How long did they shock you for? It put like for hours, but I think it was only about five or ten minutes. I would suggest that's quite a long time. Yeah. What did it feel like? Going, my mouth going dry and... Uh, I felt ugly. Mm. How did you feel afterwards? Drugged up, lazy, can't walk and couldn't walk. Just. And you, you say in your statement you could have even passed out. Is that right? Yeah. Where did you go after that happened? Did they take you back to your room? Well, they took me back to the room and I think they sent me to Kimberley. I don't know how long I was in that kind of sport, but they sent me right up to the time I left. Hmm. And then they sent, sent me to Lake Ar uh, Kimberley and then they put my brother in um, Lake Arras. And you mentioned just before about maximum. Maximum, what's that? Can you tell us about what maximum, maximum is? Maximum blocks where all the um, mad people go, or all the bad people go, people that don't they fight the nurses, or they were all in, they all had beards, and they, they were seen heaps of them having beards and that, and knocking on my door, banging on my door, and they were making me scared, and I think that's what Howard Lawrence wanted me to be, be scared, or worked. So Maximum were, were adults? Yeah, for adults, yeah. And so they threatened you with Maximum? Yeah. Is that right? Did you go into Maximum? Yeah, yeah. How long would you stay in there for, Donald? About two days, two to three days. So I was asleep because they, they put an injection in me and they knocked me out. And when I came out of the Maximum, then they took me back to the villa and I didn't even know where I was. So just talking about the drugs there. Drugs. You just said you got a injection or drugs? Yeah, it, like ghetto. It was like ghetto, yeah. When were you given those drugs? When I was in, when I went back to uh, the villas. And this what they were tower lines, so this is like ghetto, you drink this. You know, they got it in the injection form. Were you on any medication or drugs before you went into Lake Ellis? Just aspens. Aspens or this ones. And you've told me in our conversations before that you would receive drugs every morning. Yeah. Is that right? What were those? What was those? Just like yeah. Can you describe what they? What it was like? And maybe drowsy, maybe drugged up. I felt drugged up and felt lazy and didn't want to move, didn't want to listen. Yeah. Did they tell you why they were giving it to you? To calm me down. To calm me down because I was, I was showing some high tensions. Yeah. Would you tell them at all that you didn't want it? I did, yeah. I don't want it. And, and Howard Lawrence pulled me to the ground and put it, put it on my throat and made my head turn and just put it in my mouth. After you told them 
I don't want to take it and they poured it down your throat. Yeah. What were you like after you would have the, the liquid, after you would take the drink? What was the effect? Well, well Howard stayed in the medical room and I had to stay by Howard Long. I just slept outside the medical room. That's what I was doing. So you were just sleepy? Yeah. How else did it make you feel afterwards? Walking around drugged up. Daisy, dizzy, or daisy, dizzy. I was dizzy. And you said you would get that every morning? Yeah. And I might just read out another yep. line that you, you said to me. Uh, when this happened, when you would say you didn't want the orange liquid, they would hold me down and stand on me to stop me. What was interesting was that they would say I was just having a tantrum, yeah. but if a Pākehā boy did the same, he was just playing around yeah, was and playing. wasn't treated the same way. He wasn't treated the same, they were just playing around doing their own thing. Mm. And what they were doing, what Pākehā boys were doing, they were, they were picking on the old Māori people, Housie mm. or... Just go play at, the, play at the shop, at the canteen shop. We were all around here playing and buying lollies and... I had money to buy lollies and we shared our lollies. Played housey, did you say? Yeah, played housey. So I want to go back to, because uh, you talked a little bit, little bit about the sexual abuse. I know this is hard, hard to talk about, Donald, um, but I think it's important that you tell your story now, um, the way that you've told me before. Now, who was it that that sexually abused you in Lake Alice Donald? Well, Howard Lawrence, I don't know what abuse means. Well, Howard Lawrence put me up the wall and he um, got his uh, belt undone and he pulled his pants down and he dropped me to the floor and I think he was gonna, I think he was gonna shove it in my mouth and I bit him. How did that end? No, the uh, if after that happened, did somebody come in and stop it? Uh, did he let you run away? Well, Tani Mani stopped a lot of things, but yeah, Tani Mani stopped it. And I think, well, I don't know if he was going to have sex with me or not, but he did. Mm. But I just don't know how he did it. At that time or a different time? At that time. And you said that... Nurse Howard would always come and threaten you and yeah. act in that way. Yeah. How often would that happen, Donald? When he got refused what he wanted. He came back and got me and started picking on me and, hey, take this, drink this up. And he kicks me and... And you say, you've told me, if you don't mind me reading out this section again, you said he would make regular sexual advances oh, yeah, yeah. towards me and made me stimulate his penis by hand or by mouth. Yeah. And this happened a few times. Yeah? And it did. And that was just Nurse Howard? Well, he, he, he had just had Nurse Howard. I, was, I knew some other nurses were doing it, but not to me. Mm. To other, to other um, boys. So you would see that to the other boys in Lake yeah. Alice? Is there anything else you want to say on the sexual abuse korero? No. Kapai. Now one of the uh, important things you kept talking to me about was te ao Māori uh, and Lake Alice totally disregarding any part of your culture. Yeah. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Um. Maybe I could read what you told me and there's anything you can add on to that. Uh, I did not have access to any Māori cultural learning as a child there. Cultural values and beliefs are very important to me 
and that's what we've talked about at the start of our kōrerone. And having none of that when I was growing up had a huge effect on my well-being. I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. Yeah, okay. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and I think it's important to read out this comment that you made to me as well, Donald. Lake Ellis was supposed to look after tamariki. Yeah. If we look at the word tama, yeah. means boy, and ariki means chief. So they should be looking after us Boys like Ariki, yeah. but they weren't. Yeah. They didn't care about us at all. Yeah. And that must have been even worse when you saw that Māori Tamariki were being even treated even worse near them, Pākehā. It was. Did you get to see any of your whānau while you were in Lake Ellis? Only one. My uncle, my uncle. So Auntie Sosa and Willie Gilbert, they were, they were the only ones who came to see me. They took me up for the day and, and me and my cousin were playing, looking for an empty pack of smoke so they can make things with it. And they did. And, yeah. and then they took you back again? Yeah. But that was the only visit you had? Yeah. Did you have any other communications with Fano? Yeah. Do you think anybody knew what was happening to you in there, Donald? No. Yeah. Did you tell them about it? No, it's embarrassing. Whakama. Yeah. Do you remember how you left Lake Ellis? You want to go put that um, put in Kimberley? They put me in Kimberley, and, they, and what they did to me in Kimberley, I mean, they tied me to the ceiling. They tied me up to the ceiling, and, and I asked, and they Treating you horribly to another place. Where it was the same kind of yeah. mahi, eh? So what was life like for you after you got out of state care, going through all of this horrible tuki no tanga? How my life went, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of repeating myself. And what I mean by repeating, well, I'm knocking. Well, I knocked on some people back then. And and I'm knocking now. <laughs> I'd say you're telling your truth and what happened to you, Donald Epayana Tena. So you got into crime, a bit of crime? Crime. Not, not bad crime, but just taking the rap for people. Mm. Like this fellow broke into the car and the cops saw me with the camera and, the, and that fellow took up that door. He took off and left me there with the camera. And then when I got in the car, the, the, the cops hit me and they took me back to Lake Ellis and they looked for another couple of weeks for me to go back to my to the Wolfie homes, because no Wolfie home were taken. And you actually were taken back another time to Lake Ellis, weren't you, for yeah. a few days on remand? Yeah. Where were you held then? Well, 16. And well, 16, the two adolescent people. And, um, and this was all Howard Lawrence again, in fellow 16. But he was pretty high up then. Or pretty high up. Do you think he remembered you, Donald? Yeah, he did. But he had a different attitude then. I think I was old enough to give him a hiding. Mm. And you only you spent about two or three days yeah, and in Lake Ellis that time? And they put me back in uh, the warfare homes. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say about Lake Ellis before I move on to uh, talking about your whānau and a little bit now? Is there anything else you want to say about Lake Ellis specifically? Not really. Thank you for sharing that with us. So you talked a lot to me about when you got married and your tamariki. My son, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's been your experience then? with state care and, and your son. What they doing it to me, they took my son off me when he was six years old, only because I play, um, was trying to control my wife, and they put me in jail, and then my missus, my missus lost my son to six, and I tried to fight for my son back, but they said, no, you're too bad with, with your children, and I've never been a father until the age of 40. Mm. That's when my son came into my life. And now 
Pero a mí, speaking on behalf of my son, I'm not, I'm sort of glad I'm here. Yeah. We're glad you're here, you're here, Donald. Do you mind if I read this, yeah. this sentence yeah. that you told me? Uh, after he was taken away, so you're talking about your son, I left his mother and tried really hard to prove to the social welfare system that I could be a good dad. I would follow their process and everything they told me to do. I did three parenting programs, but it was like they were out to get me from the beginning. They said I failed every course and that they would not give my son back. The whole process traumatised me. How could they stop me from seeing my son? I just wanted to show him love. So you were doing your best you could yeah. to get your son back and show that you could be a good dad. Yeah. Did you ever get him back, Donald? No. But he's 17 now, and so he should just come back. Mm. I think he's ready to come back. I've got a daughter in Australia, and she was sent by the judges to go to Australia. And I wanted my daughter back, but because I wasn't ready for what was happening, so I didn't know what to do. Mm. Yeah. And that's had a huge impact, the separation yeah. from your children. Yeah. What does that feel like, Donald? Suicidal. Yeah. Didn't want to be around. Or... Mm. Do you have any contact with them now? Yeah, except for my daughter. And I might just read this bit again, if you don't mind, Donald. There have been so many bad effects that have come from my time in Lake Alice and from the state care system. The biggest effect, which hurts me every day, are that my children were taken away from me. Because of my past, which they themselves created, and their ideas that I wouldn't be a good father. They decided to take my children away from me their dad and put them into a white system that was designed to tame them and take them away from me and from their Māori culture. Yeah. Their childhood is something we will never be able to get back and the social welfare system did that to us. Yeah. Um, you also talked about to me the anger and the sorrow that you feel and you have to fight with every single day. What's been, can you describe to us that, that struggle, Donald? How you, how you have to deal with the emotions and the anger you feel? The only way I sort of can explain it is, um, I was just a peepee. Mm. I was just a peepee and I don't know. And from there you've been having to deal with it yeah. every day. Do you see any of your other siblings? Yeah. 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 But they sort of, we sort of distant. I'm not that close, but I don't know. I know I've got some brothers out there, but they called Q's, K I U. And you're K U? Yeah. And because you said you had a twin. Yeah. And that you were separated when you were six, seven? Yeah. When did you reconnect again? About 10 years ago. Ten years ago, I had diabetes, and he was living in Stanford House, where they gave him diabetes. And and we haven't connected, but we, we know who we are. Mm. Yeah. And you talked to me about uh, the memory loss you also suffer from. What's that like, Donald? Can you explain that to us? I get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I get in trouble and I try and explain it, but. I can't, I can't explain it. Mm. You just have issues remembering yeah. now and then? And do you think that's from what you went through at Lake Ellis? Yeah. And the last thing that you talked to me about in our last conversation was just your disconnection to your Māori culture. Uh, and that you wish you had just been kept with your grandmother right yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. Do you think it would have been different if they had let you stay with your grandmother? Yes. The last thing I want to talk to you about, Donald, is what you are wanting from the Royal Commission, 
from being here today. What are you looking for? For me, yes. <laughs> Thinking about why are the people picking on the peepees? Mm. And that's all I can think of that. And when I was a young child, that they were damaging right up to the age of 14. And from the age of 14, I was all getting picked on by the, by the system. And the system was called the authorities. Well, they put me in some situations, the authorities, because they allowed to do it. Because mm. we signed our babies over to them. And they're allowed to do the, those sort of things. Well, I don't know, but that's what's been happening. And that was one of the main things you kept talking to me about, Ne, is the change in these systems so that our tamariki are looked after, our pepe are looked after, right from the beginning, um, like they should be, Ne. Well, kumutu tātai wa kōrero. Thank you for sharing uh, your kōrero with us today. Um, you're very courageous and brave to go into the detail and description of what happened to you in these places, Donald. And I really appreciate the uh, you sharing your connection with Te Ao Māori yeah. for all of us and understanding that that's very, very important for Māori tamariki. Yeah. Now, if you just wait there, our commissioners might have some pātai for you. Yeah. Right. He's saying, do you want to ask for the same thing? No, I just okay. Oh, tēnā koe, um, Donald, uh, ka aroha ni, tino nui ki a koe, uh, kōrero. Thank you, thank you for your kōrero. I have no questions, but my colleague here, Paul, is going to speak to you. No questions. No questions, Donald, just an acknowledgement. Koe o te atua. Acknowledging Atua, the parentless, um, watching over us, helping us keep us safe today. Um, acknowledging your maunga, your awa, the maunga and awa of Mariapoto Tuwharitoa, the tears that fall on Tuwharitoa that flow down the Hokanui River and past where you are today. Um, it's, I know it's a lot of work, a lot of courage is required to share your journey, your journey from um, Pepe to protector to Tor, you've demonstrated that to us today. That that's where you are today. Um, you are that protector. You are the Rangatira. Um, thank you for sharing your hard experiences of violences of, of violence, of torture, of abuse, and of racism. You know, yeah. We acknowledge this today. And a particular thanks also. I know you are working with the inquiry on other investigations and other parts of your your journey through care. Kia thank you so much for your time. Yeah. And tēnā koe te whaia, uh, kia ora. So, ko mutu.